Okay. Now, just before we get into what I wanted to talk about this segment, because I love my tangents, <laughs> hey, it's all healing, it's all good. Um, this is not kombucha, even though it's that same bottle I showed you. This has some chia seeds, You could, I think it's actually quinoa seeds, um, or quinoa. <laughs> um, so you can put quinoa or uh, chia seeds in there, and... I've got cinnamon in there, and it's lemon water. I thought, I was just tinkering around, I thought I'll lemonize this one. Hey, there's some cinnamon. And I've just been reading how cinnamon is higher than cacao on uh, ORAC value, which is antioxidation value. Now, also, it's interesting what happens in uh, antioxidation. What happens is that um, hydrogen atoms... Uh, can also play a role in the electron donation. So that hydrogen atom is actually being taken across as well as a negatively charged electron to stop this oxidative stress theory of aging or the over -positron positronization of your body. So it's like a reanionizing without grounding. And that's what antioxidation sort of is. Now it's funny that um, cinnamon's above cacao and also lemons in my water, and lemon is compacted hydrogen. And hydrogen in German means generator of hydro, you guessed it. So this is a very hydrating drink, and don't put too much chia seeds or quinoa or quinoa in there because um, it'll actually soak it all up and you'll, you'll be left a little bit thirsty and then you'll have to drink more of something else or even more and more. And so I just, you know, don't put too much in there. I'll put maybe that much in the whole bottle. You don't want to get too many uh, of those seeds in there because they suck all water up everywhere, even when they're in you. However, it's a good idea to put them in there because it's like eating aloe vera. And like when you just have raw water, even if it's distilled, it can wash straight through and dist distilled water and water in general, remember, pulls molecules because it has memory in it, everything it touches. So, um, you know, it strips us too much distilled water, strips our body of its minerals of all kinds, acidic minerals and uh, alkaline minerals. Remember, coffee is stripping our body of alkaline minerals because it's so acidic. Now, yeah, so it's a good reason to have this mucilaginous chia seed action in there because um, it's like aloe vera, how it holds the water in your, and the hydration in your body and you've put it with citric acid. So as they're expanding, they're sucking in the citric acid and hydrogenization. You could even put some jibitacarbu juice or whatever other antioxidant juice, berry juice or whatever in there, if you really wanted to make it even better and blue green algae, whatever you want to do. But the point is that those little chia seeds are sucking up that citric acid, that complex, uh, sorry, compacted hydrogen. And so it's sitting there on your cells because the mucilaginous thing doesn't just slide straight through you. So, and cinnamon is higher than cacao in ORAC value. So that's a good little tip. Anyway, so we're going to get into the main segment I actually wanted to talk about before that came into my head. This, um, this is kind of the best, among the best meals offered here at my university at the moment. We have a superfood lady out the front here who's not part of the uni, I don't think. She has her own little stall. But, you know, she's to the stage, she's putting... Yeah, she's realised what superfood is, maybe. She probably hasn't done too much research into it, I don't think so. Um, she's putting burnt agave, totally brown, not even yellow agave. And agave is clear. It's meant to be clear and you should be using clear agave. She's putting burnt brown agave with her superfood smoothies for everyone. So this is really going to ramp up uh, candida and, and the black molds and the, the funguses in your body. They're going to love that burnt agave. That's like such the type of sugar they love. Um, so she, you know, she hasn't, she's not going too far with it all. <laughs> it's, uh, it could be better. And so when you burn the agave, you're burning off all the, the vitamin mineralization. The, um, there's not much minerals, but you're burning off all the vitamin and, and the inulin. It's like 50% inulin. And so you're burning that off. So you're making it from anti-diabetic to diabetic by burning it. And, you know, it's going to make people hyperglycemic. So that's not a superfood smoothie by any standard. Just because it's got goji berries in it. 
Anyway, moving on. So this is among you know the best foods here offered at the uni. It's a little brown rice sort of. You wouldn't call it a salad just because it's got rocket in it, but you know, little brown rice meal. I don't know what this is. If this is another type of rice, this brown rice. You can see the little brown flecks through there. Because, you know, that's the actual brown rice there, but I don't know what the little brown bits are. Another type of brown rice, I think. Which are actually brown. It's got cashews in it. Great. Well, the best nut for fat, because the breakdown is just really simple. It's super absorbable. And um, so here's what I mainly want to talk about. The tofu in this. So it's got some capsicum. It's alright. Capsicum's got the red pigment, the lycopene. And that's best absorbed not in a cold salad or meal like this, but when it's heated up. Because lycopene at about 60 degrees is becomes just super absorbable. And that's the best way to soak up your red pigment lycopene, which is good for your heart and cardiovascular system and your veins. So, you know, besides all that good stuff, and we could go into how cashews are a medicinal nut. I've read somewhere that you only need seven a day. I'll scoff a handful though. So, and it depends on how you eat, obviously. But um, the cashew actually comes out of a, an apple. <laughs> and an apple, the apple is like a bitter medicinal. Now, all these bitter foods, they're highly medicinal foods. People say, no, oh, you've got no basis for that. Yeah, whatever. So, you've got sugar everywhere in society. Just, just for the basis of balance, it's a medicinal. But um, you'll find very medicinal foods are, are bitters, like bitter melon, for instance. And... Um, you know, it comes out of this little sour, bitter uh, apple. Now, the apple's no longer medicinal and used once this comes out the end of this little apple. So this comes out of the end of the little apple. And I'll show you a diagram, uh, a picture, sorry. And um, so what I feel is happening is that, and, and they don't use the apple after that happens. After it pushes through, you know, the plant pushes this out, the apple is apparently not as medicinal anymore. So something's obviously transferred into this. So that's why I said that's a medicinal nut. And it's super absorbable. It's really, it's just, it's soft. It's not like macadamia nut. I feel like I can eat two handfuls of macadamia nuts and not really get much from it. Unless I soak them a bit. Unless I soften them. Yeah, a good thing to do with uh, macadamias is blend them with oranges because the citric acid will help break it down as well and pour that over your salad. So that's actually a salad dressing, macadamia and orange. But yeah, so I really like the cashew nut. It's just a super absorbable fat. We don't just live on protein. You should start to feel the triangle of, you know, what you need, uh, like protein, fat, and amino acids and so on. Um... There's a, there's a sort of triangle, and, and you start to feel, you know, and like I was eating the rest of my uh, pistachios over there, and I'm getting a lot of protein feeling from it. And I'm like, oh, I don't feel like protein right now. I'm, so, I'm pretty sure it's fat I feel like right now. So then, as soon as I eat this, it, it tastes really nourishing. Sorry. Um, so as soon as I eat this cashew, it's definitely what I was after. I can just tell. And that's not going off what my parasites are saying, because my parasites are always saying, give me sugar. <laughs> so you get, you got to learn the, to discern the differences of who's really speaking. Is it your cells asking for nourishment or the parasites surrounding them? Because remember, the Human Bacterium Project showing us that we're made up of 10 times more bacteria than cells. So it's not an invalid point. Obviously, rocket's awesome. So, here's what I wanted to go into, and this was all just uh, extra. I wanted to go into tofu, and how toxic tofu is. Now, I can taste, I can feel this after, even just a small meal like this with, say, about 5 to 10 chunks. That's how easily I can feel it, and how sensitive I've become to food as well. So, it's very interesting um, what we're about to read on this, because... You know, firstly, before we go into that article, and I mean, we can scour around the internet. People have, I've lived with a lot of hippies. Um, you know, I'm from Australia, the shamanic triangle, I call it, from Nimbin to Byron to Tweed. Ed's here, where I am at the moment. And, um, you know, you sort of grow up around here with sort of an alternative medicine knowledge. And, and just, you're, you're kind of aware 
in the background of all this sort of, uh, let's just call it hippie lifestyle to stereotype. Um, you know, and in that, I've been made aware that everyone loves their tofu and everyone's on this singular grid eating type. You know, you're the person who's meant to walk across grids, not just get stuck in the grid of vegetarianism or the grid of veganism or precarianism or um, monofruitarianism or fruitarianism or breatharianism. Yeah, you're the person you're meant to choose, or liquidarianism. You know, liquidarianism is my base. You're not meant to just stay in it, though. I don't just drink liquids. And it's the same with veganism, and I have a huge problem with vegans at the moment because they're hurting people. There's a countless meek, weak, weak and meagre um, vegans that come to me and, and think they know better. Well, we're about to show you about um, why your third eye looks so toxic to me. Now, I had one that I was living with say to me, oh no, I saw a peer-reviewed journal article that disproved the xenoestrogen effect of, um, you know, which is a fake estrogen effect of the phytoestrogen nature of tofu. It's a phytonutrient and it's a phytoestrogen. And this acts as a xenoestrogen in our brain, which causes aromatization, which is causing you to age quicker. And you get a lot of these vegans with that whole death camp look like they've been in a Nazi death camp and you know they don't look healthy so why am I going to listen to you um, just because you read an article <laughs> uh, so firstly I think we need to be the example and not just um, talk with other people's information I mean I can feel this that's why I've decided to make the video I know it now for sure I'm not just reading horizontally I'm experiencing vertically or spiritually as well so that's why I've decided to finally make this video on tofu. Uh, so it's a phytonutrient and a xenoestrogen, which means it gives you aromatization, which is basically the, the things, the androgens, like the steroidal hormones turning to estrogens, which is very aging, especially to women about 40 and 50. You'll really see this ramp up in them if you know what you're looking at. You can see tapeworms in people. So once you, you know how to look at someone's aura and you can really tell what's going on with them, you can see the xenoestrogen effect really easily. And you get almost like that haze, like when you get the fluoride stare. You get, it's similar, the, the, um, the thing when you, when you see our xenoestrogen effect. And not quite there. And, you know, this guy was saying to me, yeah, I read a peer-reviewed article and it disproves that it's not actually xenoestrogen. Da, da, da. as his eye was waning while I'm looking at him <laughs> and going, I can see the aromatization. Anyway, so what do we do for that? Well, one thing in general, passion flower is my number one because it gets you out of deep-seated contraction cycles or addictions of any sort. Now, not just that, but passion flower is actually an anti-aromatase inhibitor. So it's actually built specifically for that and has those substituents in it. So it's actually an anti-aromatization. So passion flower tea. That's my number one. And we're not going to go into a big breakdown list. There's mushrooms you can eat and so on. Um, actually, the common button mushroom, I think, is the estrogen remover. Because you don't just want to let these things loose and then they can reabsorb in your gut. You want to get them all the way out things like the chia seed in your drink like that. It'll actually push stuff out of your colon. And uh, what did I just say? Uh, the mushroom, the button mushroom as well. It'll actually grab it from in your intestines and pull it all the way out. So it doesn't just, these estrogens don't just reabsorb. So it's a full strategy. Okay, so let's go have a look into this article and uh, more on why tofu is toxic. And besides that, I'll just quickly lastly say the reason from my perspective and all of my research independently is sorry the battery was running out uh, from my independent research over the last few years um, in my opinion most of the world's soy is completely GMO and so it's sterile it's not something that's life-giving it doesn't have life force and etc um, it's it's anti-fertile, like when you're eating uh, a watermelon without the seeds. It's not the way nature intended it. And we're not going to go into the balance of the seed versus the flesh of a, a fruit. 
but um, suffice to say that it's there for a reason. And you know, I had to tell my parents recently, eat your apple seeds, even though they contain a little bit of cyanide. It's not like you're eating two handfuls, you're eating like 10 seeds and you've eaten a whole apple. It's perfectly balanced. It's the same with lemon. You eat the lemon whole because the bioflavonoids on the uh, surface, the white stuff of the lemon, the anti-cancerous. And what does the flesh of the fruit do? Well, besides lemonizing and alkalizing our water, the flesh of the lemon can spike up your, your parasites, your um, candida, because it's very sugary as well. So that's why, and then the seeds are antiparasitical, so we eat the whole lemon. And candida has an association and acts and is very similar to cancer, being a, a yeast and, and fungusy like Check it out, research it. Um, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to say lastly on the tofu, that in my opinion, 80%, possibly more, but definitely 80% of the world's soy is uh, GMO and just no good. You know, and you check all the products. It's like we're eating the same stuff, the same 10 foods, corn, meat, you know, uh, potato, uh, coffee, it's, and soy. It's just in everything, and wheat, you know. It's these same 10 products. I don't think that's how we're meant to eat. So, um, in my opinion, 80% of the soy in the world's no good, and you're most likely getting that unless you're growing your own. So let's take a further look into soy.